Hello, I'm Miss Barrett. I'm the 7th and 8th grade art teacher here at Anna. Uh, we're going to talk about texture today, and I'm also going to introduce your textured, crazy, wacky bird. Um, there's two types, of, two types of textures that artists use. Uh, there's actual and implied texture. Actual texture is something that you can actually feel and touch. Implied texture looks like it has texture, but when you touch it, it's, it's sleek, it's like a two, on a 2D surface. Um, actual texture is con considered 3D, three-dimensional. Uh, you can walk around it. You can actually touch it and feel it. 2D is height and width only. There's no depth there, so it's a t 2D, and it's also called implied texture. So let me give you some examples. Um, my jacket here is call is a actual texture. You have um, you can feel it, and um, it's really soft. So there's numerous types of textures. Everything has a texture to it. Uh, here you have an ice cream scoop, and this is very um, sleek, shiny texture. Um, so you would consider it smooth up here, but down here you have these ridges, so it would be kind of bumpy uh, feeling. So this is considered actual texture because you can feel it. Artists use actual texture in their work, um, and they also use implied. Implied texture would be something like this. Okay, This is a, a, a watercolor project we did last year. And this right here is called implied texture. They have all these bumps, and you have, um, and you touch it, and it's smooth. There's no bubbles. These are um, water watercolor techniques that you'll get to learn here pretty soon. Um, but the, this is considered an, an implied texture. Once you touch it, it's really smooth. Um, you don't feel it like you would my jacket. Okay, so the reason why we're talking about texture is because our next assignment, you have to go and find all kinds of textures to um, do a rubbing, kind of like a rubbing plate, or you actually are using rubbing plates, or you can look at um, areas around the room, like the wall or the bottom of your shoe even, because sometimes you have some really cool designs on some shoes. Um, so you could use some of those for your textures. And um, that's why I want you to kind of look at the things around your room, what you have, uh, but you can also use my rubbing plates because those have some awesome textures. Now, when I say rubbing plates, these are what they look like. You have these cool designs and they have a raised area. This raised area, once you put a paper over it, you're going to be able to see that design. And so we have a ton of different cool textures. Uh, these are actually brand new this year, so I'm excited to see these because I have some awesome, cool, whimsical uh designs on those. So you'll get to pick through those. Please take care of them and make sure you put them back on the teacher's desk after each time you use it. Don't leave them on the table or on the floor. Uh, make sure that you put them back because I want to use those for years and years. Um, I've had these for, for some time and they're getting kind of beat up. I think these are about 10 years old. So um, like I said, I have about, I don't know, about 15 to 20 different types of rubbing plates. But I encourage you to look at the textures around your room. Look at your uh, bottom of your shoes and such. Okay, so that's about texture. Uh, you are going to start off with this project. I don't want you to think about the design of your bird yet. Uh, we're just going to think about color, and we're also going to think about what textures we're going to use. So with this, uh, I'm going to start with some rubbing plates because I haven't used them before, and I'm really excited to, to see them. So this one looks cool. I like these circles. Okay, so I'm going to use this one. Uh, there's two sides of this. There's a kind of more of a flat side, and then you'll be able to tell that there's a raised side. So there's this one. I'm not sure if I can show you here, but if you touch it and it seems more flat, that's the side you don't want to use. This, the raised side, should be uh, facing to the sky. So you're going to get this big old piece of paper. So this piece of paper is 12 by 18. You only get one. So make sure, make your decisions um, before you actually start. So you're going to get one big piece of paper. And you're going to put this rubbing plate underneath your paper. And I'm going to stop here in just a second. I'm going to show you. Okay, I hope you can see that well. Kind of hard to do this by myself. Um, so I'm, I got my rubbing plate here, and what I'm going to do, I have this big piece of paper, and I don't want to put start right in the middle because that's wasting wasting room because you I want you to fill this up with all different types of textures. So you're going to have different textures, different colors for each little um, section. So I would probably maybe make your favorite one first. This is my favorite one. So I'm double-checking to make sure I have the right side. 
And I'm going to start here in the corner because remember we're covering the entire surface. And I'm going to pick a Crayola. Um, I want you to stick to complementary colors. Um, complementary colors such as yellow and purple look good together, red and green, blue and orange. Um, I would start maybe with that first. Um, that way you have some that are contrasting colors. And then move on, like if you want to do yellow and green together, then that will work. But first we're just working with Crayolas. So I am going to do purple. And when you're doing a rubbing plate, and I'm sure you, you did this in elementary school, it's very easy. You want to use the side of the Crayola. Don't want to use a tip because then you get some stuff in there. You kind of want to find where that template is. And I'm just going to rub that design on there. Notice that I'm at the end of that template. That's okay. And if you don't want to use the entire template, that's fine too. You just like one area of it, but I'm going to actually go a little darker. I'm pressing pretty hard because we're going to do a wax, a wax resist. And that's a cool design. Okay. So that's actually a pretty good area there. So that's one template, one texture, and that's actually purple if you can't see that. So once I get that done, then I'm going to find a different texture. Okay, so go through here. This one looks pretty cool. Sorry. Okay, so I got the right side up. Stick that under there and you can feel where it's at. If you want to do the bottom of your shoe, you can do the bottom of your shoe maybe twice here. Not, Don't really overlap, try not to overlap yet on color. Okay, now I'm going to do, let's do, let's do blue. Nah, let's do red. That screaming you hear in the background those are my crazy boys, Caden and Caleb. They're seven and almost nine. So I apologize for that. Okay. All right, so now I have uh, a red and I'm going to rub that. If you get a little bit on your other texture, that's okay. I'm gonna press a little hard. That's a cool design, too. If it's not working out for you, like you're not seeing the textures as much, you might want to see if you got it on the right side um, or you're not pressing hard enough. So double, just it's either one or the other. All right, so after you have your templates, you should have probably six to, six to eight different textures. Uh, after you have the entire paper filled, there should be no white anywhere. As far, you know, there should be some white in these areas, but everything should be colored with different textures. Okay, once you have all of those done, then we'll go ahead and go on to the watercolor. Yay! Okay, so on the watercolor, we're not going to mix watercolor. It's not really necessary for this assignment. We are going to, uh, we'll be working more with watercolor um, in a few weeks, but don't, don't worry like, well, if I want a yellow, uh, orange color, don't, don't mix them. Uh, we're just kind of learning the, the cool effect here. Okay. On the water. I know some students like to fill up their containers with water. You only need about that much water in your container. Okay. Not a whole lot doesn't take a whole lot to activate that watercolor because it's water color. All right, so with this yellow or with this purple, the complementary color of that is yellow, so I'm going to activate that and I'm going to paint this. Not pretty. So this is actually called a wax resist. Um, it, the, the Crayola is actually made of colored wax and it doesn't paint over that. You, the watercolor just kind of slides off from it. So we're painting our background. I'm going to paint all of that section. Now the textures you might be able to 
finish the textures in one day and then maybe watercolor that might take half a class period. Um, you know, just work. If you, if you finish your all of it in one day, that's awesome. That way you can go ahead and start the collage. Okay, so I have yellow here. Let's see if you can see it a little bit better. I'm not sure. Okay, the yellow and the purple, you're gonna let that dry. And now I'm gonna have red here, and I'm gonna go with some green. And you can really see that wax resist on here. And you'll see it when you start working, how that, that watercolor just kind of glides off. And it's a really cool effect to it. Like I said, I'm sure you did wax resist when you were in elementary. So we're working with all these cool designs, all these different textures. Since we have actual texture that we worked from, now we have implied texture. Um, it's, it looks like it has texture, but when you go to feel it, it's really smooth. This, when you go to touch it, okay, you have you see that texture, or you feel that texture. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm gonna stop here, and I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'll get back and I'll show you my uh, final textures and then then we'll go on to the actual sketching of your bird. Hello, okay, I got my texture finished. So I have six different textures and you can see, you know, the ha I have my purple and my yellow, my blue and orange, my yellow and purple, I just reversed it. Um, I, I did change, or I got my red and green, and then I did this one as yellow and orange because I know that I'm going to have a beak in there, or if I want some highlights areas, this would be a good highlight. And then also here, if I wanted darker areas, I did uh, purple and then blue in the background. So do some complementary colors that we have some good contrast, but then after you do the three complementary colors, then you can go in and do some colors that are not complement. Um, and that'll be fine. So you're still going to set this aside for now. Make sure it's dry. Um, it should have sat um, overnight or a few days before you're even touching this uh, or ready to cut it up. Okay, you are going to get two pieces of paper this size. Uh, you're not going to get them both at the same time. Uh, so your first piece of paper, you are going to draw a crazy wacky bird. Okay, on this crazy wacky bird, um, your um, substitute, or I think Miss Stark, she is. She will show you some examples of um, birds. They don't have to be realistic. They can be imaginary. Uh, they can have really big eyes, or you know, really big, long, curly beaks. Um, they can be crazy with hair everywhere. It's totally up to you. But the main thing that I want you to do is to fill up your paper. This is going to be a really big. Um, project. So this is a 12 by 18 pieces of paper and it's really large. So you have, I, I drew in pencil, you'll, I'll trace it in marker here in just a second, but this is a large bird that goes, you know, from almost to the top all the way off. If it goes off the page at all, that's okay. As long as it takes up a lot of your paper, you're good. I don't want a really tiny bird on this big piece of paper, okay, and you all this space here, okay, we're not, we're not doing that. We need to make big, huge, crazy birds, okay. Sorry. So on the big, huge, crazy birds, okay, you draw it in pencil. You can try a few sketches in your um, sketchbook or just a scrap piece of paper, homework you didn't turn in or anything whatever on the back of it. So um, big, just do a couple sketches, pick out one that you like. Uh, if you don't want to do a crazy, wacky bird, if you want to do more of a realistic um, bird, that's okay too, um, but you'll still be using the texture colors to um, fill it in. So on here I'm drawing a really bad, a big crazy bird and I'm going to switch the cameras uh, around so you can see me draw it. Okay, after I have uh, drawn my bird in pencil very lightly, um, this is just actually going to be, this paper is going to be used as a stencil at first. So on um, this paper, I drew it in pencil. So now I'm going to trace it in marker. I don't care what color or marker you use. Um, this is just to out.